Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Suspects still on the run after a shooting at a West Side apartment complex. We will have the latest on the investigation. Days ago, we're protesting against the United States are now turning their anger against the Iranian regime. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tabrizian in New York. We have those details, plus what President Trump is tweeting to the Iranian people. That's coming up. And live cam giving us a look outside. You may need extra time as you head out today. Some patchy fog in our area. We'll check in with Mike and get your Monday forecast. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 13th. How was your birthday weekend? It was terrific. Really, I mean, I felt so blessed and loved. I have some really great friends and family. So thanks to everyone out there who posted on my Facebook and told me happy birthday. It was very special. Had a nice steak dinner. Oh, Myron's. It was terrific, delicious. Good. Just all around, it was a great weekend. Thank you. Well, good. So as you wake up this morning, you may run into a fog bank and then maybe fairly clear and then right back into a fog bank. Yeah, I had some really thick fog. Yeah, it's very, very thick, especially this early in the morning. A lot of times it waits until later on to mm -hmm. get so thick, but um, there's no advisories yet. I have a strange you know, feeling that uh, maybe the weather surface is going to be issuing advisory coming up here, uh, but there's nothing posted yet. Despite that, it is definitely pea soup out there. This is live cam, um, <clears throat> excuse me, somewhere. Can't tell you where because can't see any landmarks out there. Quarter mile visibility at the airport. Zero going up I-10 in toward Bernie. Half mile Castroville. Quarter mile in New Braunfels. And it appeared, well, other than Rock Springs, most of the thickest fog is right here in the middle of our viewing area. It's not bad off to the east or off to the west. And it is going to continue to, in places, get thicker as the morning progresses. We also have a couple, now there may be some mist and, of course, a little drizzle, damp streets with some of this fog. There are some showers down here along the coastal plains. Some of that's going to try and drift up to the north. So we may have a couple of uh, showers around the area later on today. Temperatures are much, much milder, uh, roughly 20 degrees warmer than what it was yesterday at this time. And of course, there's just a slew of humidity out there with dew points well up into the 50s. Mountain Cedars on the high side, it did drop down considerably though yesterday from the previous day's reading. Temperatures are going to stay steady this morning. Fog, drizzle, very, very muggy and light wind out there. 65 for a high temperature later on today. Maybe a shower I wouldn't count on it, just cloudy and get used to not seeing a bunch of sunshine, if at all, because we're going to have a lot of clouds this weekend. Very, very warm and some light rain chances. We'll talk all about that coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good Monday morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Mike. Good morning, everyone at home. And uh, like Mike was saying, get used to not seeing the sun. We get used to not seeing much once you head out there. Uh, we're just a reminder for folks, low beams, not high beams. Saw a couple of folks on the way in this morning. Uh, they think they're at getting a little bit of an advantage by using the high beams, but all that does is not only make uh, visibility a bit worse for you, but uh, the folks behind the, the folks that you're coming up on really causes a big glare blinding them uh, in the rearview mirror. 37 at Carolina can't even make out the uh, lines there delineating the different lanes, and somewhere down there is Highway 151 at 410. So you will have to give it some extra time. You will have to reduce that speed, increase that following distance. You will need to put away those distractions throughout the morning commute. 410 at Highway 151, as you can see, they're having problems as well. And somewhere down there is Highway 90 at Military. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, a man is in custody after San Antonio police investigate a family violence call. Happened around 930 last night, the 13,000 block of Babcock on the northwest side. Police say in a man in his 20s ran away when officers got there. SAPD says he ended up in a field between the reserve apartments and a bar and tried to hide. He was captured by K-9 with the help of the Eagle helicopter. Suspect was treated on the scene by EMS for a dog bite. San Antonio police are still looking for suspects in a shooting at a far west side apartment complex. A woman in the, is in the hospital this morning after being shot during the incident. It happened in the 11,500 block of Wild Pine around 5 p.m. yesterday. All we know so far is officers believe an argument between two groups of people led to the shooting. So far, no arrests have been made. The incident is under investigation. 434, your morning headlines. Protests in Iran mounting after the country's leaders now admitted to actually shooting out that Ukrainian passenger jet. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people as questions at home continue to linger about what justified that drone strike against Qasem Soleimani. ABC's Megan Tavrizian is in New York with the latest. 
thousands of protesters on the streets of Iran shouting anti-government slogans after the Revolutionary Guard's admission that it accidentally shot down that Ukrainian passenger plane, mistaking it for a missile, killing all 176 people on board. Just last week, Iranians were united, protesting the U.S. after the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Now, Iran's unity weakened in a sudden reversal. Protesters tearing down posters of the slain leader. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people, tweeting in Farsi and in English, my administration will continue to stand with you. And later sending a tweet aimed at the leaders in Iran. Do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Turn your Internet back on and let reporters roam free. Stop the killing of your great Iranian people. Here at home, Trump insisting Qasem Soleimani was planning attacks against American embassies before he was killed in that drone strike. That but Defense is, Secretary Mark Esper was asked on CBS if there was specific evidence of an imminent threat. One? I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. What I'm saying is I share the president's view that probably my expectation was they were going to go after our embassies. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds the majority of Americans, 56 percent, disapprove of President Trump's handling of Iran. 43 percent approve. Only 25 percent of those surveyed report feeling safer after the strike. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. Today, millions of people will be cleaning up the devastation left behind after a massive and deadly storm system swept across parts of the south. More than a dozen tornadoes touched down from Texas to South Carolina, some with winds stopping 130 miles per hour. Much of the country is forecast to get a break from severe weather over the next couple of days, but the northwest will remain unsettled with back-to-back -back storms bringing rain and snow. Red hot lava gushing out of a Philippine volcano after a sudden eruption of ash and steam that forced villagers to flee and shut down Manila's airport, offices and schools. Clouds of ash blew far north of the volcano, reaching the capital Manila. Thousands of villagers have fled to safety. Officials say that number could swell to hundreds of thousands. Some people could not leave their ash blanketed villages due to a lack of transportation and poor visibility. Others are refusing to leave their homes and farms. Queen Elizabeth hosts a summit of senior royals at Sandringham Estate today to discuss the future roles for the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. A couple recently announced they plan to step back as senior members of the royal family. Meghan, who's in Canada with the couple's eight-month-old son, Archie, is expected to join the conversation by phone. Right now, 437, 55 degrees. Stella had an important warning about the flu and a rare case where a four-year-old nearly lost her life. And next, Spurs come from behind to get a big win in Toronto. We have highlights next. And taking a look outside with live cam, we have some thick fog in our viewing area. Please be careful as you head out. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. It was an awful night for Texans fans. Houston looking to finally break out of the divisional round and make it to an AFC championship for the first time. but. They would have to do it on the road against Pat Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. Texans were on fire in the first part of the game, scoring 24 unanswered points. But the Chiefs stormed back with four straight touchdowns in the second quarter. Late in the game, Mahomes hits Blake Bell for an eight-yard touchdown. That made for seven straight touchdown drives for Kansas City. Chiefs go on to outscore them 51-7 after the Texans went up 24-0. Chiefs win big 51-31. Mahomes completing 23 of 35 for 321 yards and five touchdowns for Houston. Deshaun Watson was 31 of 52 for 388 yards and two touchdowns. DeMar DeRozan returns to Toronto for the second time in his career as a spur and San Antonio tries to bounce back from a tough loss to the Grizzlies Friday night. San Antonio trailed to begin the fourth, but the Spurs responded with a 17-0 run, taking the lead late in the game. In the end, DeRozan scored 25 points. LaMarcus Aldridge had 11, and the Spurs rallied from an 18-point deficit to beat Toronto by one point. The final, 105-104. Now, DeRozan also collected eight rebounds and four assists while topping 20 points for the 11th straight game. This was the third time in four games that San Antonio used a big fourth quarter to win. Spurs now heading to Miami to take on the Heat Wednesday. Tip-off set for 6.30. Right now the Spurs are 17-21 on the season and as of right now, ninth in the Western Conference. I need to keep those W's coming.
So I, I, I'm assuming that going back to Toronto, this was another personal gain for DeMar DeRosa. I would say that would be very true. 442, 55 degrees. The new war movie, 1917, knocks off the latest Star Wars movie at the box office. But the rise of Skywalker earned a billion dollars, or has it earned a billion dollars yet? And next, health experts putting out a new warning about the flu after a four-year-old girl almost lost her life. Welcome back. It is now 445. A new warning about the flu this morning after a four-year-old Iowa girl nearly died from the virus and is now blind. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, losing sight from the flu. She was, you know, just a normal bug, the flu, for a couple days. And all of a sudden, you know, five days later, she was unresponsive and it was the drop of a dime that she was sick. Amanda Phillips says her four-year-old daughter, Jade, who got a flu shot in March but not for this season, was placed on a ventilator after she was diagnosed with influenza B. I didn't think I was going to see her again. She was later diagnosed with acute necrotizing encephalopathy, an extremely rare disease usually <laughs> preceded by a viral infection, resulting in rare inflammation in her brain affecting her ability to see. Jay's mom says she lost her vision and is not sure she will ever get it back. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from the doctors working on this rare case and tell you what you need to know to keep your children safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Little girl in Arizona facing a difficult health challenge got to have a bit of fun over the weekend. As ABC's Tom Yamas reports, first responders created a winter wonderland in her front yard. Two-year-old Quinn Walker loves the snow, and every year her family visits the mountains of Arizona for a little taste of winter. But this year, she was too sick to make the trip. Her doctor saying with her heart condition, it was just too risky. So when members of the Casa Grande Fire Department just south of Phoenix heard of little Quinn's situation, they knew they needed to help. They brought five tons of snow to our front yard. Quinn was too sick to go to the snow this year, so they brought it to us. The fire department dumping the snow right onto their driveway where Quinn could safely play. She and her siblings building snowmen. All this for this little nugget. The kids even going sledding. Quinn's mother, Sandy, overjoyed because Quinn still has some heart surgeries ahead. I cried so much throughout the whole morning. Just seeing the joy on her face, we wouldn't have been able to bring that to her um, this year. She loves the snow and um, we try and go every year. So um, just seeing her happy and playing with her brothers just meant the world to my husband and I. At least on this day, no doctors, yeah, no hospitals, just a lot of fun. Tom Yamas reporting. Is that the cutest little girl ever? <laughs> Adorable with a capital A. What a sweet story. Oh, and we wish the best to her and her family. We do. Right now, let's check traffic at 448. Marcus, any problems? Well, right now, uh, one problem, and uh, that problem probably covers uh, from uh, way up there to a little further down south and more east and more west and what you can see on this map, that's the fog. It's pretty much everywhere, folks. Let's take a look. As far as trans guys concerned, uh, just about everywhere we see, that's Highway 98 Military, 410 at Callahan, uh, somewhere down there, 21 at Winding Way, 410 at Jackson Keller, not too bad there compared to some of the other areas. And then Highway 90 at 35 here in the downtown vicinity, you can see folks are really having to slow down for those uh, connector ramps. Remember, they're also liable to be a little slick, so you want to reduce those speeds well ahead of any of those areas. There's I-10 there at the Y, and as we take a look at uh, some other vicinities, 410 at Ingram. Are you sure that's a real picture? I'm not sure. Well, you know, if it, <laughs> if if we weren't getting a picture, I thought about that for, for a minute, but if we weren't getting a picture, we wouldn't have the title. Ah. And the snow would have a little bit more white in it, not so much gray. Now, those cameras are, you know, a little bit higher, but even down at the surface, I mean, we've got visibilities that are down to zero. Many spots, like the case there, and uh, right at the beginning of 430, just as I was saying, I think, Fog advisory may be issued. Weather service issued one for How a lot about of the area. Those storms Friday night. Yeah. yeah. 
A lot of damage wow. from that as well. So and then once again, a perfect weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, but now, as expected, that humidity has definitely made a return. So we are not going to be seeing anything like this this morning. It was the sunrise yesterday, which was absolutely spectacular. And then turned out to be another fantastic day. Forget about seeing a lot of sunshine out for not only today, but also pretty much the rest of the week. This is a uh, live cam and yeah, it is just pea soup out there. Dense fog advisory until 10 o'clock this morning. So it's going to be really stubborn. Obviously with the fog, there's some mist and the roads are going to be damp and it covers a good chunk of the area all the way to, uh, 35 from almost Catula up through Austin, 10 going out to the hill country as well as uh, straight west on 90, a good chunk of the hill country. Visibility is well at a quarter mile or less than many spots. Zero right around Bernie, three quarters of a mile Stinson, mile and three quarters Pleasanton and a lot of very thick fog around Rock Springs as well. Even down around Catula, you got some pretty thick fog. So it's kind of, except the fringes of our area, uh, most everybody has some fog. And it's going to get thicker as it usually does throughout the next uh, couple of hours. So 48 at Bernie, 55 Randolph, same thing out there at the airport. Again, humidity is just sky high. It really started to pump back in here in the overnight hours. And we also have these few showers down along the coastal plain. Some of those are going to try and scoot their way further inland, which is what uh, this computer model, this is the rapid update model, it does have that trying to slide up there. It's not going to be a, a big rain event, if at all. I mean, it's going to be a couple of stray showers here and there. But the one thing to really take away from this is the fact that we don't have anything as far as any sunshine around here. We're going to be dealing with some fog again tomorrow morning. A couple of light showers here and there, maybe a few showers throughout the rest of the day. The only difference between really today and tomorrow is going to be it's about 10 degrees warmer tomorrow, and we're going to be staying definitely on the warm side throughout the rest of the week. So humidity continues to get pumped on in here over the course of today, as well as the next few days. And these dew points, I mean, look at this upper 60s and even low 70s. It's like a summer kind of humidity. And that again stays around throughout the rest of the week. And then we've got another fairly uh, potent front moving on through here. So that's going to scour all the moisture out of the atmosphere and lead to once again another pretty nice weekend. We are just, I mean, got a streak of these going on here. 62 degrees today at noon. We're not going to see much of a move in the thermometer throughout the day, maybe 10 degrees at best. 65 cloudy skies, maybe a couple of showers. Of course, the fog is going to be sticking around through at least least about mid morning and tomorrow we're going to be doing it all again. Fog in the morning, very, very mild temperatures, a couple of showers in the afternoon, a couple of shower, <clears throat> excuse me, one or two showers around here throughout the rest of the week and a lot in the way of clouds. Better chance for a few showers and thunderstorms. Probably the best chance for any rain is going to be Thursday night into Friday and then we are going to be clearing out somewhat for the weekend. Another Great looking weekend around here. 75. The, the problem, yeah, warm and humid. The problem with the whole week long, it's like, come on, rain, do something. And it's not, except for Thursday, Friday, maybe a little bit better chance, not anything really good as far as rain. We need some more. Yep. Thanks, Mike. 452, 55 degrees. Still ahead, the Golden Globe Award winning movie 1917 earned its stripes at the box office this weekend, knocking the latest Star Wars out of first place. Your pick three numbers, 541, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 7295, Fireball 0. And your cash five numbers, 713, 17, 29, 34. Lotto numbers, 513, 20, 25, 27, 31. And Powerball from Saturday, 321, 23, 31, 59. Three was the Powerball with a power play of two. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, no longer the king at the box office. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Chuck Zipperston. In your own time, gentlemen. Helped by positive word of mouth and last Sunday's Best Picture win at the Golden Globes, Sam Mendes, 1917, took the top spot of the box office over the weekend, bringing in an estimated $36.5 million. World War I drama knocked Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, out of the top spot. The ninth installment in the Skywalker saga, earning $15 million in its fourth weekend of release, bringing its global box office total to nearly $990 million. Rounding out the top three over the weekend, Jumanji, Next Level, which earned $14 million. The iconic sales of the Sydney Opera House were illuminated over the weekend to show support amid the devastating fires that have killed at least 27 people and destroyed more than 2,000 homes. The display included messages and photographs of firefighters who have been battling the flames over the past few months. When you're weak, I'll be strong. 
Martina McBride shared on Instagram that her mother, Jean, has passed away on Friday. The country music singer posting vintage photos of her mom and ended the post simply, I love you, Mom. One, ten, twenty. And happy birthday to Patrick Dempsey, the actor best known for his role as Dr. Shepard on Grey's Anatomy, turning 54. And the show's creator, Shonda Rhimes, is celebrating her 50th birthday. That's what's happening in Hollywood. Chuck Sievertson, ABC News, New York. Okay. You saw the weekend. You saw the movie. You said this weekend, 1917. Yeah, um, amazing cinematography. Very little dialogue and amazing long shots with uh, you know uninterrupted shots of pans and pullbacks, things like that. How long was it? Um, you know what? It, it had to be just over two. I, I'll get you a runtime, but it, it was probably easily one of my favorite films of the last year or so. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Of course, that's we'll comparing it to The Irishman, which I hated. 458, <laughs> 55 degrees. Still ahead, lawmakers in Washington are setting the stage for the historic impeachment trial showdown. It could begin as early as this week. Samsung is announcing new details of its newest smartphone and new feature for its batteries. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi could soon send the articles of impeachment over to the Senate. Firefighters honored in Australia thanks to a tribute at the Sydney Opera House. Fog is a main factor for a lot of people this morning as we wake up, as we take a live look downtown here across the street at KSAT Studios. Good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Hope you had a terrific weekend. Enjoy that weather that we had. Not really start, pretty start to your Monday morning. And Mike, how long will this fog stick around throughout the morning commute, I assume? It's going to be sticking around for definitely a while because uh, we've got a dense fog advisory and I forgot my clicker, so I'm just going to do it like this this morning. And we have got not going to work for me. There we go. 55 degrees here in town, 47 up the road in Kerrville. Everybody's pretty consistent as far as temperatures are concerned as of right now. And as far as the humidity, of course, that is just sky high with those dew points well up into the uh, mid 50s. So we're looking at, you know, dew points and temperatures basically the same as of right now with very, very light wind that with some other factors is what is causing all this fog around here. Take a look at the uh, outline as far as the uh, dense fog advisory, and it was just issued about a half an hour ago. It covers the metropolitan area going up the uh, I-35 corridor as well as I-10 into the hill country and west on 90. And boy, it is definitely pea soup out there in many spots. Quarter mile visibility at the airport, New Braunfels, and then zero going up I-10 and so getting thick going out 90. Castro, or excuse me, Pleasanton has dropped down as well. And then Rock Springs at zero visibility right now. Catula is also dropped down, so it is definitely getting thicker and it's going to continue to get thicker throughout the course of the next couple of hours. And then, of course, we've got, you know, just that dampness out there. It's that damp chill and then some mist. And so that's making the roads kind of uh, kind of slippery in spots. And then there are a few showers being picked up on radar down there well along the coast. But some of this is going to try and drift a little bit further inland throughout the uh, the rest of today. And again, temperatures are very consistent, 20 degrees above what they were at this time yesterday. At least the good news is mole or excuse me, mountain cedar did drop down significantly yesterday's reading compared to the day before about a fourth of what it was. And hopefully that uh, remains the case. We've got patchy fog drizzle cloudy, maybe a shower today. Uh, one or two of them wouldn't count on it though. Mid 60s, more of the same, but warmer and then more of the same the rest of the week. It is going to be very consistent. Don't count on a bunch of sunshine. Just get used to the clouds out there. A couple of showers. A little bit better chance of rain late in the week. We'll talk about that and look ahead to the weekend coming up. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything with this fog yet, Marcus? Well, right now, Mike, as we take a look, it doesn't look like uh, any of our roadways that we can see on Trans Guide have cleared up. So right now, folks, the rule of thumb is leave early. Also, put away those distractions, those cell phones, those coffee cups. You will have to reduce that speed out there. Uh, this is for Tinnacool Level Road. And as we scroll through different cameras, you can see in some areas it's a little bit better, like Highway 90 at Nogalitos, and then other areas uh, it gets a little bit worse. Now, not too bad there, 35 at Highway 90, uh, but a little bit further out, Highway 90 at Military, uh, you can uh, just barely make out the headlights. You can't really see the lines there separating the different lanes of travel. So just use caution, reduce that speed, and take your patience with you once you head out this morning. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. In your morning headlines, protests continue in Iran today. That's after the country's leaders admitted to accidentally shooting down a Ukrainian passenger plane. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people as questions continue to linger about what justified the drone strike against a top Iranian general. In a tweet, President Trump said, quote, 
Do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. The president insists Soleimani was planning attacks against American embassies before he was killed in that drone strike. In Dallas, a teenager is in critical condition after being shot at a high school basketball game this weekend. Authorities say a fight broke out where the game was held. An officer working security was also injured but is expected to make a full recovery. A 15-year-old boy turned himself into authorities. He's facing numerous charges, including aggravated assaults. Australian firefighters have been working for months to bring reprieve to communities devastated by the bushfires that have been ravaging that country. And now these heroes are being honored. The Sydney Opera House has been projecting images of firefighters to thank them for their service. The Opera House tweeted that it wants to, quote, send a message of hope and strength, as well as to thank the firefighters. At least 27 people have died nationwide due to those fires. Thousands of homes have been destroyed or damaged. Setting the stage for the historic impeachment trial showdown, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi signaling she'll transmit the articles of impeachment to the Senate within days, the Senate trial beginning as early as this week. As ABC's David Wright reports, Speaker Pelosi says she may subpoena John Bolton. The likelihood that impeachment will result in President Trump's removal from office may be next to nil, but today Speaker Nancy Pelosi insisted it's not a lost cause. This president is impeached for life. There's nothing the Senate can do that can ever erase that. The president disputes that, tweeting today, why should I have the stigma of impeachment attached to my name when I did nothing wrong? They have rendered the Constitution of the United States and its words meaningless. Trump's attorney Rudy Giuliani told Fox News there is a way the Senate can clear his client's name by throwing out the case as soon as Chief Justice John Roberts gavels the trial to order. The rules are set by the Senate. Right. Then the Chief Justice right. interprets the rules. Okay. The Chief Justice will be given the power to dismiss. Dismissing is a cover-up. If they want to go that route again, the senators who are thinking now about voting for witnesses or not, they will have to be accountable uh, for not having a fair trial. Democrats still hope to hear from key witnesses the administration blocked from testifying in the House, starting with former National Security Advisor John Bolton. We haven't uh, eliminated the possibility of ever subpoena and going forward with uh, uh, Bolton. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell has stuck to his guns on that point. There will be no haggling with the House over Senate procedure. While Senate Republicans have made it clear they want a quick trial, no witnesses, the president is calling for an expanded witness list, including Nancy Pelosi. As his former campaign manager Steve Bannon put it, Trump understands that the jury is not the Senate, the jury is the American people. Trump doesn't want this to seem like it's being thrown out on a technicality. Politically, the president wants to win. David Wright, ABC News, the White House. People in the Pacific Northwest waking up to snow. While in the south, they're cleaning up a trail of destruction after more than a dozen tornadoes. One twister was on the ground for 40 miles. In the south, a trail of destruction. And in the east, it's weather whiplash after record temperatures that felt more like May than January. Dozens of locations set new high temperature records from Syracuse to South Florida and for the first time ever in Boston. The city hit 70 degrees on two days in January, once on Saturday and again on Sunday. Wow. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. 408, rather 508, 55 degrees. Still ahead in Tech Bites, Samsung unveiling the name for its new flagship smartphone. And next, Boeing's new CEO and president starts today amid the crisis with the 737 MAX aircraft. And live cam giving us a look outside. Once again, there's a dense fog advisory in parts of our viewing area, so be careful as you head out. Welcome back. Just about 12 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, David Calhoun begins his new job as Boeing CEO and president following the resignation of Dennis Mullenberg. The company had said the change in leadership was necessary to restore confidence in the company as it works to repair relationships with regulators, customers, and other stakeholders. That's following the grounding of the 737 MAX aircraft, which has been involved in two devastating crashes that killed a total of 346 people. Apple pushing recycling to new frontiers. It's new Daisy robot turning heads in a warehouse outside Austin. A robot disassembles iPhones said that rare minerals inside the phone can be recovered and reused. 
And manufacturers are battling a squeeze in the labor market. Companies are raising wages and paying relocation costs and bonuses to get new hires to move. The Labor Department says half a million U.S. factory jobs are unfilled. That is the most in nearly two decades. 12 after 5, 55 degrees. Still ahead in Hollywood news, a couple of familiar faces returning to host the Golden Globe Awards next year. Next, General Motors getting ready to announce an electric pickup of its own. You might recognize the brand name. Nerds. To all the people questioning right now, questioning what kind of salad costs $14? How do people just buy a house? Should I put this all on my card and get the points? How can I get my credit score to go up? Wait, am I supposed to be investing? Can I afford to fight this? Can I afford to do this? Can I afford the extra guacamole? To all those simply questioning, where do I go with all these questions? We've got your back. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. What's the time? A dime is 10 cents. Severe cold or flu? Take control with TheraFlu. Powerful, soothing relief to defeat your worst cold and flu symptoms fast. <laughs> TheraFlu, the power is in your hands. Still looking for a dry skin solution? Try Eucerin Advanced Repair Lotion. It helps stop dryness from recurring by going beyond ceramides with natural moisturizing factors found in skin. Eucerin Advanced Repair Lotion for healthier looking skin. 516, it appears General Motors is bringing back the Hummer. ABC's Kenneth Moten and Kimberly Brooks have details in your Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, from gas guzzler to no gas at all. General Motors is reportedly going to bring back the Hummer name, but this time it will be an all-electric pickup truck from GMC. The Wall Street Journal reports it will be announced during a Super Bowl commercial with LeBron James. And Samsung's next phone will be the Galaxy S20. New leaked photos confirm the phone's name. One model has a camera with four lenses. The new line of Galaxy S20s will be unveiled in about a month, along with the company's next foldable phone. And Samsung is officially unveiling its phone with a removable battery. The new Galaxy X Cover Pro lets you swap a low battery with a fresh one. It's set to go on sale in the U.S. this year for $500. So many pretty phones for all those pretty selfies <laughs> with all the lenses. All the lenses. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Well, the lowdown on the roads this morning is low beam lights. Yes, let's check in with Marcus. Any accidents? Well, so far, as far as accidents are concerned, we're doing great. No accidents out there. So we're going to move from the map over to Transguide so you can see what you can't see, if that makes any sense. There's 37 in Carolina. Now, traffic moving along fairly well. You can see the north and southbound lanes moving along. There don't seem to be a, there doesn't seem to be too many problems out there at this point in the roadway. However, as we move around, there's 21 at 410. Really can't make out the different uh, lanes there of travel. I-10 at the Y, not too bad, but then Highway 151 at 410, down there, somewhere behind all that moisture. And for some folks, we'll get Mike's <clears throat> scientific answer on this. For some folks, maybe a little explanation as to why we don't want drivers using the high beams during fog, because it reflects off. Off the, the moisture in the air, those little minute those little particles, particles of, of moisture there. And so uh, also you want to see, because the low beams and even fog lights shine down on the road instead of up like that. And yeah, it, it's just like basically yeah. putting your lights into a mirror. Now, I hadn't seen this in quite some time. Usually everybody's uh, pretty diligent on the roadways during fog uh, to just use the low beams. But this morning, saw four different motorists out there. Four. Hmm. Trying to trying to see better with high beams and that. Just it doesn't, doesn't work. Help. It doesn't mm -mm. help. So. But it also, it also hinders people around you as well. Right, because it just it adds that glow out there. So. And this is till 10 o'clock this morning they had the advisory. Yes, and in, in some places it'll stick around longer than that a lot of times, and it's going to get thicker in places as well. First of all, love this picture, a crested caracara taking flight. That's beautiful out there. I was on the Guadalupe yesterday fishing for a rainbow, and an, an egret or something with a huge wingspan went right 
by my face scared the oh that would be scary because you're focused on the tranquil setting and did the, you follow the water no i did not fall in the water Aww, but that would have been fun to watch but, uh, hand out from some of the fish he had there so anyway thank you very much for the uh, case connect picture all right back to the fog and yeah it is uh, soupy around many areas dense fog advisory as we were talking about up until 10 o'clock this morning for pretty much the heart of our viewing area and uh, with the exceptions along the uh kind of the perimeter, but we do actually have some fog even where there's not a dense fog advisory. Uh, zero visibility right now up the road toward Bernie at the airport a quarter mile, New Braunfels, Castroville, Stinson, Pleasanton's at one mile right now. Uh, Rock Springs actually improved up to a quarter mile. It was at zero. Uvalde has a lot of thick fog. Catula on top of that and then just a little bit showing up around LaGrange and uh, Corpus Christi. Temperatures are very consistent, 20 degrees above what it was yesterday. It was a real cold start yesterday morning, got down in the uh, mid and upper 30s, and now we're in the mid 50s on average around here. And of course, the humidity is just sky high, and humidity is going to continue to go up. We've got a lot more moisture getting pumped on in here, so you know what to, to expect from all that. We do have a few showers showing up down here along the coastal plains. Some of those are going to try and move a little further inland, which is what this computer model does indicate throughout the rest of today. Just a couple of scattered showers here and there, although I think the majority would be staying down to the southeast. And then lots of clouds and the chance for a couple of showers even tomorrow morning. More fog around the area tomorrow as well. And throughout the rest of the day, we will continue to see maybe a couple of showers around here. Looks like we may do it all over again. Wednesday morning on top of that and the humidity, like I said, is going to continue to get pumped on in here. And so these dew point temperatures will continue to go up and look at we're looking at some uh, mid upper 60s, even 70s for dew points. That's like late summer kind of humidity when you get those dew point temperatures well up into the upper 60s and low 70s. So that's just going to add to the fog factor and that sticks around through the rest of the week. But then another front's going to get rid of all that humidity by the weekend. So we've got the moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, moisture coming in here from the uh, southwest. And yeah, there's winter weather up there to the north of us, but all that is staying up there to the north of us. And for us, what you see is what you get. And that means a lot of clouds, no sunshine this week. 62 degrees today at noon. Cloudy skies, uh, leftover fog even, even though the dense fog advisory ends at 10 o'clock. There may be some of that uh, stubborn lingering fog around the area. And of course, watch out for some damp roads, 65 degrees. A shower is possible, primarily down to the southeast later on today. The next uh, seven days, like I said, don't count on a whole bunch of sunshine. This is going to be kind of Seattle weather, I guess, uh, throughout the rest of the week. And temperatures are going to continue to go up. So we'll be at 65 today and then mid-70s the next few days. Low temperatures will be about where our normal high should be. And we do have another front moving on through here. And once again, we've got a fantastic weekend. Uh, leading up to it, though, with the chance of rain, the better chance of rain is going to be late Thursday, Friday. Still, it doesn't look like a... You know, just a long extended rainy period, unfortunately, because a lot of those showers are just going to be here and there. Hmm. Hmm. Well, it'll come eventually, right? Hopefully so, yes. Hopefully not too much at one time. 522, 55 degrees. Up next, the Golden Globes ended, but a couple of familiar faces were already set to host next year's awards. Here are your pick three numbers. 541, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 7295, Fireball 0. And your cash five seven thirteen seventeen twenty nine thirty four lotto five thirteen twenty twenty five twenty seven thirty one Powerball. How high is the jackpot right now, Mike? Do you know? Uh, Powerball, I think it's about three hundred million. Which one? Alza. You said Powerball. Powerball? Mm -hmm. Here are the numbers: three twenty one twenty three thirty one fifty nine. Did you find it? Yep. Three is the Powerball with the power play of two, and it is now somebody missed a one. Oh, two hundred ninety six million. Wowza. For the second straight year, the Oscar ceremony will not have a host. That's okay. The next Golden Globes will have two. CNN's David Daniel has that and more. Award season news in your Hollywood Minute. Next year's Golden Globe Awards don't even have a date yet, but they do have hosts. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are set to return in 2021 to host the Globes for the fourth time. The announcement came less than a week after Ricky Gervais hosted for the fifth, and he promised the last time. Wait, am I going to be the story? No. No. I'm going to be the story. No. If you were amazed at how Bombshell turned Charlize Theron into Megyn Kelly, you weren't alone. The makeup artist and hairstylist guild gave the film three honors 
winners at its seventh annual awards, Best Contemporary Makeup, Best Special Makeup Effects, and Best Contemporary Hairstyling. Joker received Best Period and or Character Makeup, while Downton Abbey was honored for Best Period Hairstyling and or Character Hairstyling. Last year's dispute between Ariana Grande and the Grammys appears to be water under the bridge. The singer and the award show both announced she's set to perform on the January 26th award show. Last year, Grande didn't perform or even attend after a dispute with show producers, reportedly over what songs she would sing. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. We'll forgive him. 527, <laughs> 55 degrees. Canada's Prime Minister is among the mourners who gathered at a memorial to remember Canadians killed in the Iran plane crash. And who's leading the pack, pack rather, for the Democrats for president? We will have the latest numbers. And one of 2019's biggest music hits is celebrating a big honor. Remember Old Town Road? We'll tell you why it's being recognized. Hey, the gang's all here, 5.30 on your Monday. It is January 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning. A lot of dense fog to deal with this morning, so probably next extra time heading to work or school. Extra time, reduced speed, putting away those cell phones and those coffee cups. You will need both hands on the wheel. 100% of your focus needs to be on the uh, driving conditions right now. Pay attention to your driving, to where your lanes are. In some places, it's really difficult just to see where the lines are separating the different lanes of travel. So other areas, it's not too bad, but it can change in the blink of an eye. And in one yep. particular section of 1604, I actually saw different levels. There was about one foot off the ground. You, actually, you could actually see clouds moving over the roadway. And there's about a three foot span of clearing and then the fog picked up once again. Wow. Yeah, and like he said, it's gonna change literally minute by minute out there. And also, I mean, you can tell as soon as you walk out the front door, it's like, wow, the humidity, which was expected to come back up. And temperatures, it's sort of a dampish cool with all that moisture out there, mid 50s right now. So light jacket's a pretty good idea. And of course, there's the, the kind of maybe mist or just dampness yeah. on the roads too. And then we're not going to move all that much throughout the day. 65 cloudy skies and a couple of showers are possible today, although not very likely and get used to this weather because we're going to get a whole bunch of it throughout the uh, the rest of the week. This is what it looks like out there uh, by that is 410. We are looking off to the northwest, I believe. And as you can see now, granted, this camera's up a couple of hundred feet on top of that building, but we do have a lot of thick fog like Marcus was talking about down there at the surface. Dense fog advisory for most all of the area up until 10 o'clock this morning. And we've got zero visibility right now going up I-10 in toward Bernie. Quarter mile at the airport, Castorville, Stinson, New Braunfels. And these numbers can change literally uh, turning a corner and you're going to run into maybe a wall of fog in places. A lot of thick fog around Rock Springs and Fredericksburg. Not too bad on the perimeter as of right now. There are a couple of showers showing up along the coastal plain, which some of that's going to try and work its way further inland. There may be, like I said, a shower or two today, and that's pretty much about it. And as far as the uh, allergens, mountain cedar did drop down considerably from Saturday's reading. It's about uh, 2600 right now. Hopefully it's going to be staying low throughout the rest of the week. Another big front though comes through by the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So despite all the fog, not much out there. It doesn't look like. Well, no accidents yet, Mike, but we're starting to see some slowdowns up on that far northwest side, Bandera Road, both eastbound and westbound between 410 and 604. Now there's a number of areas uh, along Bandera Road where it does uh, go, the roadway does go over some creeks and streams. So that could be a factor in that slowdown there. We're also seeing some slowdowns up there where the construction was 1604 as you're approaching Redland Road, Bulverde area. So keep that in mind as well. Take a look right now. This is a trans guide. And as you see through the different trans guide cameras as it scrolls through different areas down there, uh, Highway 90, Joe McMullen, also I-10-410 on the east side. No one's exempt from the fog this morning. So just remember, but give it some extra time. Take your patience with you once you head out this morning. Leslie, Mark. In your morning headlines, impeachment isn't the only major issue the Trump administration is dealing with this week. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, the fallout from the U.S. drone attack that killed a top Iranian official still lingers. President Trump says Iranian General Qasem Soleimani posed an imminent threat to the U.S. because he was planning numerous attacks. I can reveal that I believe it would have been four embassies. But when Defense Secretary Mark Esper was asked about specific evidence regarding the imminent threat Soleimani allegedly posed... I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. 
As for National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien... I think those threats were imminent, and uh, I don't want to get into the definition far, further than that, but uh, we, we took the measures necessary to protect American diplomats. Both Esper and O'Brien backed President Trump's rationale for the fatal drone strike, but there's some bipartisan concern. I've learned not to simply take the federal government's word at face value. We've heard that the uh, from the Secretary of State that they don't know where or when, but it was imminent. That to me does seem inconsistent. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut tweeting Friday that there was no mention of planned embassy attacks at last Wednesday's briefing, ending with there was no such imminent threat. Frankly, I think what they are doing is they are overstating and exaggerating what the intelligence shows. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Meanwhile, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau among the mourners who gathered for memorial for last week's plane tragedy over Iran. Organizers say 2,300 people attended Sunday's vigil at the University of Alberta's sports arena. Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752 crashed Wednesday after takeoff from Tehran International. All 176 people died on board, including 57 Canadians. Iran later admitted it mistakenly shot the airliner down. Trudeau says Canada stands united in grief and he would pursue justice and accountability from Iran for what happened. China's vice premier will travel to the United States this week after the two sides reached a first stage deal on trade. President Trump has said phase one will be signed on Wednesday and they will work on the second phase of the deal soon. But the president does not expect a resolution to happen before the November presidential election. CNN reporting more than a dozen Saudi servicemen training at U.S. military bases are set to be expelled from the U.S. This after a review following the deadly shooting last month at Naval Air Station Pensacola. A 21-year-old Saudi Air Force second lieutenant killed three American sailors in that shooting. Two sources tell CNN the Saudis being expelled are not accused of helping the gunmen, but some are said to have connections to extremist movements. A number are also accused of possessing child pornography. That's according to a defense official and a person familiar with the situation. Officials in Australia are dropping thousands of pounds of food, like carrots and sweet potatoes, from planes to feed wildlife affected by the fires. Australia's prime minister is expressing regrets over the handling of the country's wildfire crisis. It's claimed more than two dozen lives. He admits that there were things that could have been handled much better. He says he will propose a national review to study how the government should respond and offer support to those affected by such disasters in the future. It's stunning in scope. There was that headline we saw last week, something like over a billion animals have been killed in these fires. And some species, their word could be wiped out. Completely wiped out. 537, 55 degrees. Still had lots of drama going on with the royal family now that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have decided to step back from their royal duties. More on the meeting scheduled today with Queen Elizabeth. 2020 Democratic candidates clamoring to be in the top spots as we get ever closer to the Iowa caucus. And live cam giving us a peek outside on your Monday morning. It's mild and humid and foggy. Kind of a little yucky out there today. But we're glad you're with us. By 40 now to the 2020 election and just days until the Iowa caucus. A latest shift in the polls now indicating Bernie Sanders with the momentum leading a four-way race between Elizabeth Warren, Pete Buttigieg, and Joe Biden. At the same time, Senator Warren is taking aim at her opponents as they all jockey for position. ABC's Rachel Scott is in Iowa. Fight hard and win! Senator Elizabeth Warren packing the House and sharpening her attacks. Senator Bernie Sanders is heading into this critical stretch with a slight edge on the rest of the pack in this latest state poll. Warren, who is also courting progressive voters, saying Sanders needs to take his campaign in a different direction. After a report, his volunteers were given talking points, saying Warren's supporters were more affluent and would vote for any Democrat. I was disappointed to hear that Bernie is sending his volunteers out to trash me. We cannot nominate someone who takes big chunks of the Democratic coalition for granted. Sanders pushing back, saying he never approved of that message. People sometimes say things that they shouldn't. You have heard me give many speeches. Have I ever said one negative word about Elizabeth Warren? Warren also going after former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, who is skipping the state entirely. The next president of the United States, Michael Bloomberg. Instead, campaigning this weekend in Texas with TV's Judge Judy. Judy, thank you. 
And uh, hello, Austin. I am running to defeat Donald Trump. Warren calling on Bloomberg to release non-disclosure agreements from employees who settled with his company over hostile work environment complaints. What is it that Michael Bloomberg has to hide? Bloomberg will not be on the debate stage, and neither will Andrew Yang, who failed to qualify. Screw Iowa, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yang said he was kidding, but the battle for Iowa is intensifying. The caucus just 22 days away. Right now it's 542, 55 degrees. Coming up next, more on today's royal meeting to discuss the future of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Five forty-five today, a royal meeting set to discuss the future of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. That's after the couple announced that they want to step back from their royal duties and split their time between the UK and North America. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshev with details. Britain's royal family thrown into turmoil last Wednesday after Prince Harry and his wife Meghan announced their desire to step back from senior royal duties. Queen Elizabeth stepping out before cameras Sunday. The 93-year-old monarch now calling for a face-to-face -face meeting with Prince Charles, Prince William and Prince Harry to discuss the future role of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. Palace sources saying Meghan, who has returned to Canada to be with baby Archie, will join the discussion by phone. It shows that there is a real and genuine desire to accommodate the Sussexes, to make them happy. They've clearly been so unhappy and nobody wants that. A British journalist close to the Sussexes, ITV's Tom Brady, interviewed the couple for a documentary on their African tour last October. Would it be fair to say not really? Okay, it's really been a struggle. Yes. Prince Harry also revealing his relationship with his brother had become fractured. We're brothers. We're, we'll always be brothers. Um, we're certainly on different paths at the moment. The Sunday Times reporting William spoke to a friend about Harry, saying, I've put my arm around my brother all our lives, and I can't do that anymore. The Queen now striving to both help her grandson and protect the crown. I think what's important now is that moving forward, they are all on the same page and that they are talking things through before things are put out into the public domain. The issue of money likely to be a part of Monday's discussion. Harry and Meghan have said they will work to become financially independent, but whether Prince Charles, who provides the bulk of their money, will continue to do so remains to be seen. Ariel Reshef, ABC News, New York. Let's check traffic at 546. Marcus, what's happening on the roadways? Fog. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right now, as we take a look, uh, not much has changed. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of movement. We haven't seen any uh, improvement. We haven't seen anything get worse. I guess that's the good news. So in some areas, uh, the fog, you can see a little bit. Others, uh, not so much. As we take a look at various areas, and by the way, no accidents at this point. So that's the great news. The bad news is you still have to deal with this once you head out. It's 21 and 410, you can see or you can't see, all you see is the headlights. Here, at least at I-10 of the Y, you can make out the different lanes going eastbound and westbound. That's not the case there. 37 at 410. Uh, can't even make out the poles from those street lights. 10 at 1604. Looks like there's a lake underneath 1604 right now. And then I-10 in Callahan down there. That's a little bit easier to see. And there's I-10 in Frio. So, folks, give us some extra time. Take your patience with you. Just get ready for a little bit longer commute and be patient out there. Where was it that was that eerie shot that looked like a lake underneath the it, highway? That was I-10-1604. So instead of seeing I-10 beneath 1604, just the angle of the camera and the lens is... It was eerie. Kind of looked like there's a pool of water Ooh. underneath. Mm -hmm. That bizarre blue-green glow. Also looks like giant lampshades around the streetlights, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that mist and fog around there. Well, so. every single one of those seems to show fog. Only well, you can't see the poles. You can yeah. just see the light just mm -hmm. kind of hovering by itself. In mm -hmm. some way, shape, or another, most everybody is seeing fog this morning, except kind of on the uh, the perimeters of our uh, viewing area. And it's going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning, so get used to it for the next couple of mornings as well. Okay. And not much sunshine. And warm temperatures during the middle of the week. Yep, very warm temperatures. Then back to uh, kind of where we should be by the weekend. Once again, it looks like a fantastic weekend. Somebody was out doing a lot of bird watching this weekend. Mr. Olson, Olson, who takes a lot of very good bird pictures. This is a gorgeous one there. An eastern bluebird enjoying the sun before the clouds came back in. 
Good thing you got the sun bathing in yesterday. Uh, mountain cedars on the high side, but again, it's uh, about a fourth of what it was on Saturday's reading. We don't have any big fronts moving on through here anytime in the next couple of days, so hopefully that number is going to be staying on the lower side. Mold, I have a strange suspicion, is going to be definitely going up. So this is what it looks like live cam over there by the airport. The airport would be back in here somewhere. We're looking kind of off to the uh, the northwest and dense fog advisory in effect till 10 o'clock this morning. That doesn't mean it's all going to go away at 10 o'clock. There may actually be some lingering fog even after that. So just something to be on the lookout for and visibility all around the area is less than one mile. Matter of fact, pea soup up there right around Bernie. Kerrville, a lot of thick fog. Catula on top of that, even up toward uh, Fredericksburg. And mo like I said, most everybody has a little bit of fog around this morning. 56 in Helotus, 48 in Comfort, and 56 also in Floresville. And the humidity remains extremely high around here. And the humidity is just going to continue to go up over the next couple of days. Here's what the radar is picking up. A few light showers along the, the coastal plain. And uh, this computer model has primarily down here to the southeast a few of these scattered showers around. There may be one or two of them trying to move further inland throughout the day. It's a chance. I wouldn't count on it, though. Uh, pretty much the same thing tomorrow. In the next couple of days, we have that chance of rain. It's not really a, a good chance at any uh, showers around here. Tomorrow morning, we're going to be starting off with uh, more a couple of sprinkles, perhaps more fog, mist and drizzle and one or two showers throughout the uh, the afternoon and the humidity, which yeah, it's high right now is going to continue to go up. So relative to the temperature, it's very, very high, but we're still below that threshold of 60. However, that's going to be changing in the next couple of days with all this moisture coming back on in here. And so we're going to see dew points in the upper 60s and even low 70s, which is kind of like summer sort of humidity that sticks around through the rest of the week. Like I said, we got another front moving through by the weekend, so that's going to knock that humidity out of the atmosphere. We don't have any big systems in our direct coming in our direction. It's just all this moisture sort of converging, and so there's nothing really to squeeze out any decent rain. There's a better chance of rain late Thursday, Friday, 40% chance for a shower, thunderstorm, something like that. But it's just going to be sort of that that nuisance kind of weather, pretty much very warm nuisance weather. Lots of clouds. It's like. Just do something rain or don't rain or clear out that that'll be the I think the best way to describe this week 62 degrees today at noon cloudy skies. Maybe even some leftover uh, mist and fog at noon and then a high today of 65 degrees close to normal. Obviously, we don't see much of a swing in temperatures given the fact we've got all this cloud cover and moisture around here. Tomorrow we start off very mild again, get up to 75 degrees and we stay in the mid 70s through the rest of the week with a lot of clouds, very warm, low temperatures, a couple of showers here and there, a little bit better chance of rain late Thursday, Friday, then we clear out for the weekend. Okay, well, we'll take it because the weekends are when we really want the nice weather, isn't it? The streak of beautiful weekends continues. We're spoiled and we like it. High 52, 55 degrees. Last year's big music hit, Old Town Road by Little Nas X and featuring Billy Ray Cyrus has earned a big honor. We're going to tell you all about it coming up next. Pick three numbers, 541 Fireball 4. Your daily four numbers, 7295 Fireball 0. Cash five numbers, 713, 17, 29, 34. Lotto numbers, 513, 20, 25, 27, 31. Powerball. Almost at 300 million now. 321, 23, 31, 59. Three was the power ball with the power play of two. The hit single Old Town Road has earned a big honor. CNN's Rick Damagella tells us which one. Along with the latest news on Prince, BTS as well in our Music Monday segment. Yeah, I'm gonna take my horse through the Old Town Road. I'm gonna ride till I can't no more. Old Town Road rides to number one. The smash hit by Lil Nas X and featuring Billy Ray Cyrus was the most streamed song of 2019, according to Nielsen Music and MRC Data. The song was streamed 2.5 billion times. Post Malone took the honor of most popular album of 2019. Nielsen says Hollywood's Burning received over 3 million equivalent album units, which includes 357,000 traditional album sales. Grammy news, a tribute for Prince. Billboard reports a tribute concert for the late pop star will tape two days after the Grammy Awards. Beck, Common, Gary Clark Jr., Earth, Wind & Fire, Alicia Keys, and John Legend are among the artists expected to perform. The concert special will air later in the year. Okay, 
check out the latest from K-pop superstars BTS. The song Interlude Shadow features a solo performance by BTS member Suga. The song comes from their highly anticipated new album Map of the Soul 7, scheduled to release February 21st. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. The San Antonio Spurs getting a big fourth quarter win over the Toronto Raptors last night. Final score 105-104 after the Spurs trailed by 18. This was the third time in four games that San Antonio used a big fourth quarter to win it. Spurs now headed to Miami to take on the Heat Wednesday. Tip-off set for 6.30 our time. Right now the Spurs 17-21 and on the season and currently in ninth place in the Western Conference. We're about three minutes away from the hour of six important news if you're looking for a contractor to do work on your home. Still to come, what you need to know before you hire anyone in the new year. And Trans Guide really tells the story this morning of widespread fog. We'll check in with both Mike, Mike and Marcus coming up here on GMSA. In a stunning turn of events, Iranians who just days ago were protesting against the United States are now turning their anger against the Iranian regime. Good morning, I'm ABC's Megan Tabrizian in New York. We have those details, plus what President Trump is tweeting to the Iranian people. That's coming up. And look at the uh, live cam out by San Antonio International Airport. You can barely see the cars down there on Loop 410. We'll get an update on traffic and weather with Mike and Marcus. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Monday. It is January 13th. Hope you had a great weekend, everybody. Time to get this work week started and not looking really pretty out there for your Monday morning. And Mike, this isn't just a San Antonio thing, is it? It's pretty widespread. Yeah, it's covering, uh, fog is covering most of the area. Some of the uh, fringe counties or on the perimeter don't see a lot of fog right now, but there is plenty of it out there. And again, this is a look at live cam right now and you can hardly see anything. Now, granted, the camera is up a little bit higher on top of the buildings or on top of those towers out there. A lot of the uh, trans guide cameras as well, but there's still plenty of fog around the area. Dense fog advisory for uh, San Antonio. All on 35, 10, going out 90 up until 10 o'clock this morning and visibility is still at zero at Bernie half mile at Port uh, SA quarter mile out there at the airport New Braunfels Hondo at a half mile Pleasanton has continued to uh, drop down to now a quarter mile and around uh, Catula as well as Rock Springs Del Rio now is seeing fog so we're now seeing a little bit more there along the Rio Grande and even off to the east there is some fog there so like I said most everybody is seeing some fog in one way shape or another there are a couple of showers down here along the coast. Um, other than what's being picked up, obviously a little mist with some of the fog or just dampness out there. Some of this is going to try and work its way further to the uh, north, but rain chances today are basically almost slim to none, but there's just that mention of it. Mountain Cedar still on the high side, but it dropped down about a quarter of what it was on Saturday. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour or so. Temperatures are going to be staying steady all morning long. We're going to keep plenty of fog around here, and even after the dense fog advisory expires at 10 o'clock, we'll probably still have some of this uh, kind of lingering fog and mist and drizzle around the area. Low 60s today at noon, and don't count on much sunshine, not only today, but the next few days we'll make it up to 65 degrees later on this afternoon. Yeah, it's going to be kind of Seattle weather for the rest of the week. Weekend forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here is Officer Marcus Trujillo and despite this fog up to this point, there hasn't been much. S still no accidents on the highway, so uh, we have an incident off the highway, not an accident. Uh, that's probably a uh, fire going on out there, but as you can see, all the main lanes are of the highways move along fairly well despite this type of visibility out there. This is Highway 90 at McMullen, so things don't look too bad there, but then go over to the east side, I-10, 410 interchange. We can't even see where those lanes are, where the clover leaves are. Same thing here, 35 at 604 up on that far northeast side. Moving over to 410 and Ingram, not much improvement there, so folks, make sure you take your patience with you. Reduce that speed and increase that following distance once you head out this morning. Leslie? Thank you very much, Marcus. New this morning, a man is in custody after San Antonio police investigated a family violence call. It happened around 935 last night in the 13,000 block of Babcock, which is on the northwest side. Police say a man in his 20s ran, uh, ran away when officers arrived. We are told he tried to hide in a field. 
between the reserve apartments and a bar. He was caught by K-9, and with the help of Eagle helicopter, he was treated on the scene for a dog bite. Right now on KSET.com, you can watch Broken Blue, the investigative special, looks into police discipline at the San Antonio Police Department. Data our defenders obtained showed officers were granted a reinstatement after they were fired in 67.5% of cases in the last decade. Right now you can watch the complete special. You can also read reaction from the San Antonio City Manager and the San Antonio Police Officers Association all on our homepage. Also on our website, there are opportunities to vote before the general election in November. Texas is one of 14 states with primary elections on Super Tuesday in March. It's called Super Tuesday because it's when the greatest number of states hold primary elections and caucuses. The results are usually a good indication of which presidential candidate will secure his or her party's nomination. We break it all down on our homepage. Topic of morning headlines, protests in Iran mounting. This comes after the country's leaders admitted to accidentally shooting down a Ukrainian passenger jet. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people as questions at home continue to linger about justification for that drone strike against Qasem Soleimani. ABC's Megan Tavrizian has new developments. Thousands of protesters on the streets of Iran shouting anti-government slogans after the Revolutionary Guard's admission that it accidentally shot down that Ukrainian passenger plane, mistaking it for a missile, killing all 176 people on board. Just last week, Iranians were united, protesting the U.S. after the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Now, Iran's unity weakened in a sudden reversal. Protesters tearing down posters of the slain leader. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people, tweeting in Farsi and in English, my administration will continue to stand with you. And later sending a tweet aimed at the leaders in Iran. Do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Turn your internet back on and let reporters roam free. Stop the killing of your great Iranian people. Here at home, Trump insisting Qasem Soleimani was planning attacks against American embassies before he was killed in that drone strike. That but Defense Secretary Mark Esper was asked on CBS if there was specific evidence of an imminent threat. One? I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. What I'm saying is I share the president's view that probably my expectation was they were going to go after our embassies. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds the majority of Americans, 56 percent, disapprove of President Trump's handling of Iran. 43 percent approve. Only 25 percent of those surveyed report feeling safer after the strike. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. In Australia, the government has pledged $34 million to help restore and protect the country's wildlife devastated by wildfires. Officials there say the fires have been an ecological disaster. This is video from the Koala Hospital in New South Wales. Conservationists say more than one billion wild animals have died during these fires. They include large amounts of reptiles, birds, koalas, kangaroos, wallabies, and wombats. In the Philippines, lava gushing from a volcano after a sudden eruption of ash and steam forced many villagers in the area to leave. They also had to shut down Manila's airport, offices and schools as well. Some people could not get out because of lack of transportation and poor visibility. Now to a weather alert. People in the Pacific Northwest are waking up to snow, while in the south they're cleaning up a trail of destruction after more than a dozen tornadoes. One twister was on the ground for 40 miles. And in the east, it's weather whiplash after record temperatures that felt more like May than January. ABC's Kenneth Moten reports. Overnight in Seattle. Snow hitting Snohomish County tonight. We'll see how far south it comes. A days long cold snap kicked off with snow, a rare sight for the area even in January. Storms are hitting the Pacific Northwest along with the coldest temperatures so far this season. The snow's coming down pretty good and frankly is accumulating. The storm is raising safety concerns along the coast after the rough surf swept a family out to sea. Authorities say an Oregon father and his two children were on the beach when they were hit by a large wave. One child died. The other remained missing overnight. In the south, a trail of destruction. Storms spawned more than a dozen tornadoes from Texas to South Carolina this weekend, killing at least 12 people. In Georgia, this trampoline tossed like a small toy. Near Columbia, South Carolina, the powerful winds slammed these school buses into each other. It was four of us together, four. including mm -hmm. my baby. In the bathtub. Mm -hmm. In the bathtub, <laughs> with a mattress over our head. 
North of Shreveport, Louisiana, the roof of this middle school is now gone. Meanwhile, on the East Coast, a weather whiplash after winter was interrupted this weekend. Dozens of locations set new high temperature records from Syracuse to South Florida. For the first time ever in Boston, the city hit 70 degrees on two days in January. Once on Saturday and again Sunday, but back to reality today. Temperatures are going to fall off the table after record shattering high temperatures across the east. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Nine minutes after six, 55 degrees. Still to come, a new warning about the flu after a four-year-old Iowa girl nearly died from the virus and is now blind. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. After the break, a look at some of the stories you may have missed over the weekend. They are trending right now on KSAT.com. And live cam giving us a look outside on your Monday morning. Lots of fog to deal with this morning. Please be careful. New this morning on KSAT.com, former Cowboys head coach Jimmy Johnson has been elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Hall announced his selection last night live on the air on Fox. <coughs> he was hired in 89 by new Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. The initial team went 1-15, in but he rebuilt the roster, including trading star running back Herschel Walker to Minnesota for a slew of draft picks. That deal considered among the most one-sided in sports history. Johnson left the Cowboys after back-to-back -back championships for the 92-93 season in a dispute with Jones, but he, the roster he built also won the 1995 NFL crown. Back here in San Antonio, the craft brewery scene continues to grow in popularity. Craft breweries have been popping up around surrounding communities like New Braunfels and Bernie. If you're interested in checking them out, we have a map of all locations on our homepage. Hey, good news if you're a fan of Duck Donuts today in honor of National Rubber Ducky Day. They're giving away free cinnamon sugar donuts with every rubber, rubber ducky purchase in store. You can also score some free donuts if you're one of the first five in the shop wearing a duck costume. Free coffee will be given out as well to the first 30 customers who quack their order <laughs> today. <laughs> Have you had those cinnamon sugar donuts at Duck Donuts? No. Where's I've never donuts? even had duck it's, donuts uh, before. Uh, up I-10 and Days of Vala. Okay. I think. Oh, okay. All right. Those small kind of out oh. my way. Oh, those cinnamon sh that will change your life. Really? I it's yeah. life changing, everybody. A, Go get a, a donut. It's a cake donut. It reminds me of the donuts we used to get at Cider Mill when I was little. Mm -hmm. That it's oh my goodness gracious. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, go buy us some so we can try it. I got to do weather here in a second. We don't. You want you run. No. Okay, I don't have anything else to do, right? <laughs> oh, no, she can handle it. <laughs> Let's find out what's happening on the roadways. Might take a while to get to Duck Donuts because of all the fog. Well, nobody's going to be running very fast, whichever one of the three of you goes, because I have to stay here. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways uh, so far, uh, not too bad on the highways. Now, we do have reports of a major accident uh, off one of the highways, so we're going to exit I-10 onto Wurzbach, Lake Wurzbach over to Vance Jackson. That's where we have that major accident in the clearing stages, but the actual highways themselves, main lanes, as far as accidents are concerned, still pretty good. 35-604 there. Uh, can't see it really. See a couple of headlights if we move over to Highway 90, Joe McMullen. Visibility is just a little bit better. But the unique thing this morning, uh, and Mike, maybe you can give a uh, chime in on this. The unique thing this morning is as we look at all these Transguide cameras, I've not seen any of these cameras improve or the ones that did have a little bit of visibility get worse. It's kind of stayed the same so far. It's really the, weird. The moisture just keeps getting pumped in here and pumped in here, and that's why it's been actually dropping in a lot of places, and it's going to continue with a lot more humidity uh, throughout today, this afternoon, tonight, and tomorrow. So we're going to be dealing with the same thing again mm. tomorrow. And so. we're in quite the warm pattern. Yeah, it's going to be uh, like mid-70s all week long. Yeah, it's been a bizarrely of... mild winter, hasn't it, guys? Mm -hmm. That was one of the uh, long-range predictions going back to last fall, that it was going to be a little bit drier and kind of on the, the warmish side. So we've had our, our, you know, cool snaps here and there. Sure. So it is nice to see some rain this week, but it's not like it's going to be a lot of rain, unfortunately. So, all right, here's your fish story for you. Was yours, uh, your catch bigger? Uh, my, I lost mine. Uh, that's a pretty good-sized largemouth bass. I don't know what body of water it is, but... Uh, must have been Guadalupe out towards Seguin. Yeah. Somebody, nice catch and release yeah. on a plastic bait. Hmm. Hmm. Thank you for the play by play on that no one. Problem. I'm impressed. Darker color plastic bait works wetter in, uh, weather in, uh, better, better? Weather in better weather? cloudy water like that, muddier water. It's easier for I the fish to see. It for oh. Yeah. Very interesting. Thank you for the fishing tips. All right, here's live cam right now, and uh, you need some dark 
plastic bait, I think, in this to see better because don't use your high beams, that's for sure, because of all that thick fog out there. And dense fog advisory remains in effect till 10 o'clock this morning for pretty much the heart of our area, although there is a lot of fog off here uh, to the west. Castroville, quarter mile, but these numbers really haven't changed all that much, like Marcus was talking about, because we just keep getting all this humidity around it. There's nothing that's changing in the in the atmosphere really so that's why these conditions really haven't changed all that much a lot of thick fog along the rio grande uh, Catula at a half mile kerrville one mile two at fredericksburg and no zero visibility right now but it is definitely they got and of course the roads are damp as well mid 50s everything's really consistent in a situation like this because of the cloud cover all this moisture in the atmosphere a couple of showers uh, down along the coastal plain which this computer model does keep those basically down there to the southeast. There may be one or two of them that try and move on in later on today. Rain chances are, yeah, a mention of it, but very, very doubtful today. Now, going to do it all over again tomorrow. A couple of maybe showers around the area in the morning and mist, some fog, and one or two showers possible throughout the rest of the afternoon. Same thing on Wednesday as well. Not much changes. And here's what I was talking about. All this moisture continues to get pumped on in here, and these dew point temperatures, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere, are going to continue to go up. And we're going to be seeing these numbers up in the uh, mid-upper 60s and low 70s, which is kind of... Uh, the summertime humidity, and not much is changing throughout the rest of the week. Now, by the weekend, we do get a front to move on through here, but this is a very sort of bland weather pattern. All the moisture in place. However, what we're not seeing is any good storm systems that are going to be moving on in to really spark off a lot of rain. So it's just going to be that light scattered sort of nuisance rain in the morning and throughout the day if we do see anything. Now there will be a better chance, however, by late Thursday into Friday as we get a little bit more moisture around here. Uh, an impulse is going to be coming on through and that's hopefully going to touch off some more decent rain around the area. And then this front will come through on Saturday and that's going to, uh, well, get rid of all the humidity and once again, Give us a fantastic looking weekend today. We'll make it up to 62 at noon, so we're not going to see a big jump in temperatures throughout the day. We uh, will fluctuate about 10 degrees between the low and the high later on today. Maybe a shower kind of doubtful though, and then humidity comes back in overnight or excuse me. Fog comes back in overnight. Humidity is going to continue to go up and we'll be staying in the upper 50s, low 60s tomorrow morning. Get up to 75 for a high temperature. Same thing on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Late Thursday into Friday is the, the better chance for some rain, although not a sure thing. And like I said, it's not going to be like we've got a week of showers around here. It's just basically a week of warm, humid conditions with a lot of clouds, and then we clear out by the weekend. Weekend's looking good. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Just about 620, we are at 55 degrees. Just ahead, it appears General Motors is bringing back the Hummer. Details coming up in your morning consumer news. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it right now on KZ.com for your chance to win a $25 gift card from We Are Circle K. The drama Just Mercy tied for fourth place in its first weekend of wide release, earning $10 million. The comedy Like a Boss tied Just Mercy at number four, launching with $10 million of its own. Jumanji The Next Level is up to $257 million domestic after a third place weekend worth $14 million. We're not alone. Good people will fight if we lead them. After three weekends on top, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker fell to second, grossing $15.1 million for a domestic total of $478 million. We need to keep moving! Come on! 1917 emerged victorious in its first weekend of wide release. The Golden Globe winning World War I pick topped the chart with $36.5 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. If your mouth is made to amaze, let Philips Sonicare give its care a raise. If your teeth chew beyond their limit, they've earned 62,000 movements a minute. If your mouth's used to a manual clean, get healthier gums in two weeks, guaranteed. If your amazing mouth does more than its share, give it Philips Sonicare. Next level clean, next level care. There's always a way to make life better. Philips Sonicare. Are you really in your 60s? 
Yeah. Looking good. And it's a good time to take a look. Where? Just pick up your phone, go to OurTime.com, and see who's out there. Pretty easy, huh? Our Time, the dating site for people over 50. And this morning's GMA First Look, losing sight from the flu. She was, you know, just a normal bug, the flu, for a couple days, and all of a sudden, you know, five days later, she was unresponsive, and it was the drop of a dime that she was sick. Amanda Phillips says her four-year-old daughter, Jade, who got a flu shot in March but not for this season, was placed on a ventilator after she was diagnosed with influenza B. I didn't think I was going to see her again. She was later diagnosed with acute necrotizing encephalopathy, an extremely rare disease usually preceded by a viral infection, resulting in rare inflammation in her brain, affecting her ability to see. Jade's mom says she lost her vision and is not sure she will ever get it back. Coming up at 7 a.m., we'll hear from the doctors working on this rare case and tell you what you need to know to keep your children safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Also ahead on GMA, get your ballots ready. So which of Hollywood's biggest stars will wake up with an Academy Award nomination? Good Morning America is Oscar Central, and they will carry every nomination live with instant reaction from the proud nominees, and it all begins at 7. Now to consumer news and from gas Kessler to no gas at all. General Motors reportedly going back to bring the Hummer name into the fold, but this time it will be an all-electric pickup from GMC. Wall Street Journal reports it will be announced during a Super Bowl commercial with Mr. LeBron James. Samsung's next phone will be the Galaxy S20. New leaked photos confirm the phone's name. One model has a camera with four lenses. The new line of Galaxy S20s will be unveiled in about a month along with the company's next foldable phone. Samsung officially unveiling its phone with a removable battery. The new Galaxy X Cover Pro lets you swap a low battery with a fresh one. Set to go on sale in the U.S. this year for $500. Okay, four cameras? So they had to go beat iPhone's three cameras. Yeah, next year you're going to want the five or six camera. Next, I mean, pretty soon it's just going to be cameras all along the right, back. Right, you won't even have a back. Yes, what's happening? Wow. Your time now, 626, and it's 55 degrees. Head next half hour, close one, but our Spurs were able to narrowly pull off a win in Toronto. We have a recap in Morning Sports. Stick around. Take a look at Transguide right now. There's 410 at Callahan. Fog, and uh, you can't see a darn thing. 281 and winding way. There's 37 at Carolina, so pretty widespread fog here in the San Antonio metropolitan area. And taking a look outside with live cam. Boy, it's a lot of fog out there all over the place, and we have dense fog advisories, which Mike is standing by with details on coming up. Good morning to you. It is Monday, January 13th. Thanks for being with us this morning. How's it been on the roadways? Well, surprisingly, it, on the highways itself, it's been fairly decent. Now, we've not had the number of accidents that we would expect with all this fog. Mm -hmm. We do have one major accident, uh, Vance Jackson at Wurzbach, but as far as highways are concerned, so far, no problems. And big change from yesterday morning. We actually had some frost around parts of the area Sunday yeah, morning. Temperatures are about 20 degrees, 20 to 30 degrees warmer than what they were at this time uh, yesterday. And yeah, there is still plenty of fog hanging around the area. Temperatures are very consistent in the basically mid 50s and visibility in some places is down to just about pea soup. There's a little bit of mist hanging around here. Haven't seen any actual showers in our vicinity, there's some down along the coast. There may be a shower later on today. I kind of doubt it, though. 65 for a high temperature. And get used to not only the fog, but clouds and very warm temperatures, because that's what is in store for the rest of the week. And here's a look at the live cam. This is out there by the airport, and that's 410. Airport would be back up in there. Visibility, well, yep, it's... Pretty thick. Dense fog advisory up until 10 o'clock this morning for most all of the area. Still a quarter mile out at uh, the airport. Bernie is still at zero. Quarter mile, New Braunfels, Pleasanton. Everybody has got very, very thick fog, and it extends pretty much far and wide. Obviously, it's a little bit better around Gonzales and LaGrange, uh, Corpus Christi, Laredo, but even along the Rio Grande, 
There's some very thick fog out there, despite the fact you're not in the dense fog advisory. There's those showers down along the coast, which are eh, just a few sprinkles here and there. And like I said, there may be one or two sprinkles later on today, but I wouldn't really count on it, though. Mountain Cedar yesterday's reading dropped down by about a fourth of what it was the previous day, which is good news. And mold looks like it's probably going to be going up, given the fact we've got so much moisture in the forecast around here. Weekend right now is looking pretty good. Now the front moves through. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. And you were just scurrying back from the uh, computer. Anything new coming up? Well, that accident has cleared. Okay. Towards Bach at Vance Jackson as we take a look at the roadways. I expected to see a lot of, a lot more uh, of orange and yellow from the slowdowns, uh, but this is just the usual slowdowns that we have for this time of the morning up there. Bandera, 1604 area. Of course, those eastbound main lanes headed from Bandera backward towards the I-10-604 interchange, and then also southbound 35 as you're making your way towards 1604 from New Braunfels and beyond. Let's take a look at a couple of transguide cameras. Right now, I-10 looks pretty good there. 37 and 410, still no sign of the roadway past that fog. And this is what we we're commenting earlier. It looks like there's a lot of water down there. That's just a reflection of the fog and plus the lights underneath the highway there, I-10-1604. No changes, I-10 and Callahan, so, so far, so good. Just remember, watch that following distance once you head out, folks. Reduce that speed, increase that following distance. Leslie? Thank you, Marcus. San Antonio police are still looking for suspects in a shooting at a far west side apartment complex. A woman is in the hospital after being shot during the incident. It happened yesterday afternoon around 5 in the 11,500 block of Wild Pine. Right now, investigators believe an argument between two groups of people led to the shooting. No arrests have been made. In the morning headlines, it's going to be a busy week for the Trump administration, still dealing with the impeachment controversy as well as fallout from that drone strike that killed a top Iranian general. CNN's John Lawrence has a look ahead. President Trump says Iranian General Qasem Soleimani posed an imminent threat to the U.S. because he was planning numerous attacks. I can reveal that I believe it would have been four embassies. But when Defense Secretary Mark Esper was asked about specific evidence regarding the imminent threat Soleimani allegedly posed... I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. As for National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien... I think those threats were imminent, and uh, I don't want to get into the definition far, further than that, but uh, we, we took the measures necessary to protect American diplomats. Both Esper and O'Brien back President Trump's rationale for the fatal drone strike, but there's some bipartisan concern. I've learned not to simply take the federal government's word at face value. We've heard that the uh, from the Secretary of State that they don't know where or when, but it was imminent. That to me does seem inconsistent. Democratic Senator Chris Murphy of Connecticut tweeting Friday that there was no mention of planned embassy attacks at last Wednesday's briefing, ending with there was no such imminent threat. Frankly, I think what they are doing is they are overstating and exaggerating what the intelligence shows. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Today, David Calhoun begins his new job as Boeing CEO and president. The company had said the change in leadership was necessary to restore confidence in the company. It comes as it works to repair relationships with regulators, customers, and all other stakeholders after the grounding of its 737 MAX aircraft that was involved in two crashes, killing 346 people. Also today, Queen Elizabeth is hosting a summit of senior royals to discuss the future roles of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. People are still buzzing about the news. The couple is stepping back as senior members of the royal family. Meghan is expected to join the discussion over the phone. She's in Canada with their son, Archie. Trending now at KSAT.com wasn't the ending Texans fans were hoping for, not in the least. After a first quarter flop, Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs made a comeback, scoring 41 consecutive points, beat the Texans 51-31. Now Chief, Chiefs head to the AFC title game, where they will host the Tennessee Titans. Green Bay has stepped closer to the Super Bowl after beating the Seahawks 28-23. The Packers headed to California to play the top-seeded San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Championship. The winners of both those games will go on to the Super Bowl on February 2nd. A nail biter of a win for our Spurs in Toronto. Barely beat the Raptors, the defending champs. Final score 105 104. Spurs went into the fourth, trailing by 13, were able to power through the deficit. Toronto missed a long three at the buzzer, capping a win for the Spurs. DeMar DeRozan had a big night, putting up 25 points against his former team. It's never one thing. I just think we just kept playing and 
uh, we got more and more aggressive as the half went on and uh, didn't really make a lot of shots, but I thought defensively uh, we gave ourselves an opportunity to win and it worked out. Sometimes the zone can slow you down a little bit. Uh, we were able to get stops and get back in transition, attacking the hoop, um, finding each other, and we started to make some shots. So uh, it was huge for us down the stretch, and we were able to get back in the game and then find a way to win. Our Spurs headed to Miami to take on the Heat Wednesday night at 6.30. Right now the Spurs are 17-21, and 21, currently sitting at ninth place in the NBA Western Conference. Get the best sports coverage in town from the pros to local sports. Make sure to watch instant replay Sundays at 11 p.m. after the night beat. Be sure to follow Greg Simmons, Larry Ramirez, and the rest of the KSAT sports team on social media. They've got you covered. 637, 55 degrees. After the break, what you need to know before hiring a contractor. With so many options out there these days, hiring a contractor for a home project can seem like a daunting task. And this morning's Angie's List reporter, Max Massey, has what you should know before you hire a contractor. Searching the web is a great place to start when it comes for looking for a contractor, but there are several things to consider before making your final decision. The advice I'd give them is to definitely do your research, to get online, um, look at reviews, look at different websites, you know, not just take it from one source or just take it from somebody who came and knocked on your door. Um, I said definitely, instead of just looking at it, that's the thing too, they can get on one website and pump up reviews and those would be false reviews. While saving money is great, it's important to keep in mind when it comes to home improvement, an out of place low budget is a huge red flag. If you have, you know, four contracts coming from four different companies and three are within, you know, a few hundred dollars of each other, then you have one that's $2,000 lower, there's probably a reason why. Once your research is done and you found that contractor, it's important to keep records of all the transactions. Pay with a paper trail. Always be sure to pay with either a check or a credit card. Also, make sure you're not paying out to an individual that you're actually paying to the company you hired. And remember, it's a good idea to get at least three different estimates before you hire anyone. And always get those records in writing. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. 642. Let's check the roadways once again. So far, it's been pretty okay out there. Just Despite the fog. Not bad. That's 37 at 410, 281 at Winding Way. So uh, on the Trans Guide cameras, we have lots of pictures of the fog, not so much of the actual roadway themselves. Now, this is finally cleared up. 410 at Ingham. So we're finally seeing some improvement out there on the roadway for uh, most of this morning. Uh, all we've seen is just a gray screen here uh, in this area, 410 at Ingram. So we are starting to see a little bit of improvement. Now, this is on the uh, west side. Now, we're moving over to I-10, 410 on the east side, uh, not so much. It's uh, still very, very heavy fog there in that vicinity. So just keep that in mind, depending on where your commute uh, starts and takes you this morning. I-10 at the Y, also showing signs of improvement, and things aren't too bad here. 410 at Jackson Keller, as you can see, eastbound and westbound lanes are moving along fairly well. Not so much there for Highway 90 at Medio Creek, so that's out there, Highway 96 and 04 area. So just kind of depends where you end up. Quick shout out before we get to weather to Mrs. Michael Bringardner. Yes. Oh, yes. That sounds Sarah unusual. Spivey. Yeah. She got married yesterday. Got married Pictures yesterday. Pictures are incredible. Such a beautiful bride and they look so in love. Yeah, we took the opportunity. The five of us don't usually get together to take a picture, but it was such a such a wonderful wedding. I mean, she was, of course, just beautiful. And Blowing. they said their, their vows to each other. And we got all of our uh, spouses together. Next in line, of course, is Katie. And there's her intended behind her mark. But uh, they're, they're getting Michael. married. Yeah, late, uh, I think, toward December. Yeah, December. I think it's December. It, but a beautiful setting out there in the in the hill country. And um, yeah, there was just a great father daughter dance. Oh, Congratulations, Sarah and Michael. So happy for those guys. We are so and there's so she's on her honeymoon now. Bonnie and Michael and Mark and Lauren, all of our good um, group of people. Others out there. So yes, congratulations. It was a pleasure meeting everybody out there as well. Okay, as far as yeah, let's go back to the wedding pictures instead of these pictures because they're not very pretty out there. A um, lot of fog and some mist. Drizzle dense fog advisory again until 10 o'clock. We've got visibility, which really hasn't moved all that much. If anything, in many places like Pleasanton, it has gotten thicker. The fog has Eagle Pass at a half mile, one mile at Del Rio. So even where there's not the dense fog advisory, we still have some pretty thick fog around there. Catula, a lot of thick fog, and it seems to be kind of spreading a little bit more. 
and it's going to stick around obviously for the next couple of hours. Very consistent temperatures were about 20. 25 degrees warmer than what it was at this time yesterday. Uh, there was a little bit of frost in parts of the hill country yesterday. We've got a few sprinkly showers. That's about it. Computer model has some of these showers down there along the uh, kind of southeastern part of our viewing area. There may be one or two that try and work their way further inland today. I wouldn't count on rain. Uh, if you get anything, it's going to be just kind of that nuisance sort of rain, and that's going to be the situation overnight and into tomorrow. We're going to do the same thing again tomorrow with more fog and mist, drizzle, a couple of sprinkly showers around here. Don't uh, count on seeing any sunshine this week. There's, I mean, if there's a peak of it, That'll probably be the extent of it. There's going to be a lot of humidity. As a matter of fact, humidity continues to go up over the next 24, 12, 24 hours. Dew points are going to be in the mid and even upper 60s, low 70s, kind of summer sort of humidity around here. And that obviously is going to be feeding some of the fog and that sticks around through the rest of the week. But then we get another front move through here. So that's going to get rid of all that humidity, push it on out of here just in time for the weekend. We have obviously a lot of moisture in place, but the problem is we've got kind of the zonal air pattern, which means there's no good storm systems moving in our direction. So nothing to really give us any decent rain. Like I said, it's just going to be sort of that, uh, that nuisance kind of stuff throughout the rest of the week. There is, however, a little bit better chance for a few showers late Thursday into Friday as that next uh, front approaches here and even a couple of thunderstorms on Friday. Although as of right now, it's obviously still a few days off, but it's not looking that encouraging yet. Then this front moves on through here. That's going to put us into a northwesterly flow. Get rid of some of this humidity for the weekend. But even in behind that, still kind of a uh, well, sort of a benign pattern, if you will. So not anything really really to write home about even going into next week. Today, 62 degrees at noon, cloudy skies, even perhaps some leftover fog around at noon, and then later on today, 65 for a high temperature. So one of the uh, traits of having all this cloud cover and humidity around here is temperatures really don't go too much from high to low. You swing about maybe 10 degrees, 15 degrees perhaps. We'll start off uh, upper 50s close to 60 tomorrow, then to get up to 75 degrees with more fog around here. And a couple of showers are possible. Same thing Wednesday, Thursday, perhaps a bit better chance of rain overnight into Friday. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and we are still looking at a more of like a January sort of a weekend. Wow. All right, thank you much. Mm -hmm. 647, 55 degrees. Coming up tomorrow on GMSA, how security systems have expanded to cover all aspects of the home. The news you need to know before you go is coming up. And of course, we're going to take another extensive look at time saver traffic with Officer Marcus Trujillo. Next year's Golden Globe Awards don't even have a date yet, but they do have hosts. Tina Fey and Amy Poehler are set to return in 2021 to host the Globes for the fourth time. The announcement came less than a week after Ricky Gervais hosted for the fifth, and he promised the last time. Wait, am I going to be the story? No. No. I'm going to be the story. No. If you were amazed at how Bombshell turned Charlize Theron into Megyn Kelly, you weren't alone. The makeup artist and hairstylist guild gave the film three honors at its seventh annual awards, Best Contemporary Makeup, Best Special Makeup oil. Effects, and Best Contemporary Hairstyling. Joker received Best Period and or Character Makeup, while Downton Abbey was honored for Best Period Hairstyling and or Character Hairstyling. <laughs> Last year's dispute between Ariana Grande and the Grammys appears to be water under the bridge. The singer and the award show both announced she's set to perform on the January 26th award show. Last year, Grande didn't perform or even attend after a dispute with show producers, reportedly over what songs she would sing. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. In the news you need to know before you go, San Antonio police have arrested an 18 year old after he allegedly shot someone in the face. Brian Nash was taken into police custody. According to an arrest warrant affidavit back in August, a witness saw him point a gun at the victim and tell him he was going to shoot him. Police say the witness saw the gun go off, striking the victim in the face. Then Nash ran off. The victim was found unresponsive and taken to an area hospital. A witness identified him in a photo lineup. He is currently charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Thousands of protesters on the streets of Iran shouting anti-government slogans after the Revolutionary Guard's admission that it accidentally shot down that Ukrainian passenger plane, mistaking it for a missile, killing all 176 people on board. 
Just last week, Iranians were united, protesting the U.S. after the killing of Qasem Soleimani. Now, Iran's unity weakened in a sudden reversal. Protesters tearing down posters of the slain leader. President Trump offering support to the Iranian people, tweeting in Farsi and in English, my administration will continue to stand with you. And later sending a tweet aimed at the leaders in Iran. Do not kill your protesters. The world is watching. More importantly, the USA is watching. Turn your Internet back on and let reporters roam free. Stop the killing of your great Iranian people. Here at home, Trump insisting Qasem Soleimani was planning attacks against American embassies before he was killed in that drone strike. That but Defense Secretary Mark like Esper was asked on CBS if there was specific evidence of an imminent threat. One? I didn't see one with regard to four embassies. What I'm saying is I share the president's view that probably my expectation was they were going to go after our embassies. A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds the majority of Americans, 56 percent, disapprove of President Trump's handling of Iran, 43 percent approve. Only 25 percent of those surveyed report feeling safer after the strike. Megan Tavrizian, ABC News, New York. This week's leading essay segment, the northwest side, a popular destination and a hub for San Antonio. But what does the future of the area look like? Max Massey sat one down with District 8 Councilman Manny Pelias. Talked about a variety of subjects ranging from the domestic violence issue in the Alamo City to the goal of making the district more walker and biking friendly. That's Sunday on GMSA. But first, this morning, Max sits down with District 7 Councilwoman Anna Sandoval, and we want your input. If you have any questions, you could submit them on KSAT.com. Max may use your question in his interview. Let's find out how the roadways are shaping up as we approach 7 o'clock. Marcus? Well, very, very busy out there. We have a lot of traffic. Uh, that's right on time, so the fog not, definitely not slowing down the congestion. But we do have an accident. Now, this one's being reported here just outside the downtown area. It's going to be southbound 35, that exit ramp to continue on eastbound I-10. And as you see, those northbound main lanes, that's slowing down right on cue for this time of the morning. Take a look at various transguide cameras. Fortune and Ingram, the visibility has improved just a little bit. Not so much there, Highway 90 at Medio Creek. Fortune and Cal Cal uh, Callahan, if I could get, get that out this morning. 37 at Carolina, also very busy. And take a look at 21 at 410 up there by the airport. Yeah, it does look like in some places it's gotten a little bit better, but I wouldn't really... Yeah, I really wouldn't count on that too much. Still have the dense fog advisory till 10 o'clock this morning. Uh, the numbers now, this is just the, uh, you know, the reporting stations individually in between those spots. It could improve slightly, but there's still plenty of it out there. And we do have a couple of sprinkles down along the coast. One or two are possible later on today. 62 at noon, 65 for a high temperature, maybe a shower. I kind of doubt that we're going to have more fog to deal with tomorrow, and then it gets even warmer, be in the mid 70s all week long and don't count on any sunshine really this week. A little bit better chance for some rain Thursday late into Friday, and then another front comes through, gets rid of the humidity and another nice weekend. All right, thank you, Mike, and thank you so much for being with us, everybody. Go out there and make it a great Monday. Be safe on the roads. Updates throughout Good Morning America, and we'll see you back here for GMSA at 9.